I'm going to show you how I use a particular Kive product. It's called the Distinct V2. It's one of the um, uh, it's one of the main uh, plugins I go to when I'm using Kive. Um, it works miracles on your mix bus, and I would assume um, individual uh, instruments also. But my special place for it is on my mix bus, which I uh, affectionately call my kitchen sink. <laughs> I mean, it's like that's what's going to probably get the most things thrown into it or thrown out of it or however you want to look at it. Uh, again, this is the host, Mr. Mr. Bell, the mixer, the Mr. Bell, the mixer, Mr. Bell. <laughs> and you are here in the uh, mixing hood. So look, man, this is a cool product. Now, they have since... Um, actually updated this plugin uh, to another version. It's not the same version. I've done my research on it. I even pulled it up and, and demoed it. Um, and, um, and I probably just flew right through it and not really, you know, I'm so uh, uh, prone to the, the distinct V2, uh, but I've done a lot of research on this one. This is kind of like an emulation of a, a particular box called an overstayer. They're not trying to be the overstayer. Um, but doing my research on Kive, I have come to find out that um, that is similar to the overstayer and what the overstayer can give you and what it does. Um, the Distinct has a preset, um, a decent preset. I kind of don't like the way they presets open up. It it it, it makes you go through different kind of folders. So if I have that, you have to click on instead of just clicking on. And hey, I'm this is gonna be a review that I'm being honest about it. But I can tell you right off the back, I love the distinct. Um, that's without a doubt about it. But I do have. I don't like when I open up Kive uh, presets and I can't just click on this and click on that factory preset and then all the presets open up to me. It gives you another folder that you have to go through that says also factory preset. So I said like, why don't y'all just make it to where you click on that, your factory presets it, and it comes up or you click on your user presets and it comes up or you click on the load and it gives you, um, you know, again, presets. <laughs> so I don't, I, I'm not, I don't understand why they have so many folders to get to the thing, but I don't like that. Uh, um, I don't know if they've changed that in, in the, the newer uh, distinct. I can't remember, but if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, all kind of products open up the same way. They have this, um, uh, layers that you have to get through to get to the preset. So anyway, the, with the distinct and the way I use it, I'm using it on my mix bus. Um, and then what the distinct does for me is kind of glue and tie that all up together. So if I play this track with you, uh, for you and, um, and a B this, you will kind of see what it's bringing to this actual chain. As you see, I'm not giving, I'm not doing much on it. You see, you barely see any gain reduction. Okay, but when I disengage this, the mitts kind of falls flat with it. Out. And the thing about it is you can add odd harmonics, even harmonics, and it's digital, which is kind of just clean um, in my perspective. Um, you also have a saturation knob. You have a high-pass filter. That's um, When you say high-pass filter, this is a filtered filter. It, it, it's... it's not clean, um, it's funky, it's, um, 
it's like some analog gear where it gives a tone, you know, so like a lot of filters in keyboards and things of that nature. It gives you that type of feel where it's not like it's not clean at all. This is not a clean unit. Um, don't think of distinct as a clean unit. It's not clean. It's dirty. And I mean, everything about it tells you is just it's, it's a distortion unit. It's not clean. The distortion units aren't clean. Um, it's called distinct because it actually has a distinct sound to it. Um, it's not an emulation of the overstair. It, 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 it plays in the same ballpark as the overstair, but it's its own um, animal. You understand? So um, it has auto gain, which right now is disengaged. When auto gain is enga engaged, as you move the distortion knob to give you more distortion, um, the auto gain just attenuates the output. Um, you can drive it a little bit more on the input. I use the kind of don't. It always kind of sits at 50%. Um, you see it goes from a zero to 100 real quick. Uh, the low frequency is a shelf. High frequency is a shelf. As far as I know, I could be damn wrong. It could be very much a peak. But I think I did the research on it before. High frequency. This knob allows you to add 12 dB of presence and sheen. Uh, the low frequency is this knob allows you to add up to 12 dB of low end thumping thickness. It could possibly, and right now you could get the distinct for 19.99. It's a very, it's, it's quality for 19.99. You're going to get a piece of, uh, equipment or you're going to get a, a, a software piece of equipment that's really going to take it up a notch. So let's keep it moving with this. Another sweet thing about it which I, I find very useful and it's cool that the uh, designers figured this out is that it has a low pass filter. So right along with it having a high pass filter, it has a low pass filter. It's useful. And so again, if we listen to this, you see it just takes away. I'm gonna AB this. Cause I'm gonna drive it, so. You hear how much distortion is getting out of it. One of the couple of tricks that I do use, cause I, I usually let it sit at 50%, but sometimes I actually do just bring it back some, okay? we're here and I'm going to go to the AC ADC one, which is kind of like, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's like a Zenner limiter. Um, it, that's kind of what it seems like to me. Um, let's look at the defaults. I'm sorry, the uh, presets in here and let's see if we're getting anything that's, uh, that's working. Um, okay, so let's go to piano ballad. See, we haven't changed, we're changing here. The parameters are changing here. So we're, we're, we, you know, we're cooking. So let's see what this does. Let's compress it a lot. Bring back the inputs. Okay, let's turn it up. 
That's nice. Let's go back to 100. Of things I like about some plugins that if I set this all at mid side, um, so where they have different parameter settings, so I'm pushing the side more than the mid right now, it allows me to either do limiter on this, comp on that, right? This is some plugins, I don't know if this does that yet, so we're gonna test that right now. 
So I'm gonna leak everything right back and look for these to see if they switch. Yeah, they did. They switch. So it doesn't work like that. It would have to be in mono. Getting a little aggressive with it. I'm not gonna go too crazy. Now the sweet thing about it is you have an input and an output. So you can drive it uh, and you can attenuate it. So now that I don't pushed it like I pushed it. Right? Now that I pushed it, just bring it back. Right? Now it be it now. We back to square one. Nice. 
out. I'm not ever sure about what these THD this uh, is supposed to be the harmonic distortions but I have like some on some plugins you can really hear the difference like you um I can't even I, I won't even mention some names but I, I I have some in mind um where you push it and you really can hear it and then it also depends on what the instrument is because you might just not hear it on that type of instrument um but these being piano um um, a lot of times what I might do is just uh, listen to just that in, in solo, per se, in, so, in solo. Um, like I'll hit my listen knob right here. Like I heard a difference right there. Let's go 100% at zero meaning. So listen to it. It just gives it that much. Harmonically more richer, you know. Um, so I pulled it back a little bit. And so I got it at 51%. The width is 57. I don't. Let me hear this. This without. This with. Without. It's kind of flat. Has some life in it now. So overall, the ADC one, which I had, I, I don't have a lot of, of Kai products. But the ones I have, I, I, I'm very picky about my plugins, and I do a lot of research with it, and I also just check them out. I I even ask for like another round of like demoing if I can. Some plugin companies are good with it. Kive is actually one that's pretty decent with that request if you want to request it to them. So I mean, overall, I have one, two, three, four, five. Um, uh, products from Kai because I, I not only have these that's under my Kai fold, I also have um I also have tape by uh by Kai, which is called Tape Face. Uh yeah yeah yeah. But you have to get that well, I got that. I got it first through them, the first version, and then like, um, and then they got into a thing with, um, with, uh, they got into a thing with Plugin Alliance. Um, so I also have them, but it's under the Plugin Alliance um, folder. So I also have Tape Face, also, which is phenomenal. You can. Tape, tape face you can use it in a lot of different places too um and they have adequate uh preset even though i don't like the preset folder <laughs> it's 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 adequate it gives you a lot of uh ideas a lot of uh starting places and some sometimes it just gives you uh exactly what you need like right here it says piano vibe so if i tied all this up with this kind of uh tape face Cause I like the ADC one, what it's doing to it. But if I tie it up now, this is the piano vibe. I wonder if I use it before ADC one. Wow. 
it's it's driving the crap out of it. And so what I want to do is turn the mix knob down and maybe give it about 30% of the tape. Even less. Let's bypass. Sounds good. This glues that that piano together. Let's listen to it in context. Nice. So I've showed you the ADC and I've showed you the Cav of uh, tape face. And this plugin is so dope. It's it's almost mesmerizing to look at it sometimes. Just look at it. It's so cool. Look at this shit. The tape, how it actually kind of not just goes straight across. It actually kind of moves right along with the um the tape head, the master head, the mast head. Look at this one. It's kind of wobbling a little bit. You see it wobbling. Then that makes that wobble. You get me? You see the tape jumping a little bit going across the heads. And I shouldn't have called that a, it's a cap stand. But these are the heads. You got three heads, okay? So it's going across the cap stand and it's doing all these wobbly things. And you got this little light that flashes down here. Just And I have no idea what that is. <laughs> but it's dope, right? such a cool plug-in um i thank you kyle for your your tools i thank you guys doing a phenomenal job uh of course i have a little issue with my preset uh folder and things of that nature um and in distinct uh we have some problems where it has a bug where sometimes it won't even switch and uh, to my ears i'm thinking i'm hearing it switch it, it I, I think i hear it but but the parameters are not switching so maybe I need to update. I don't know. Um, we'll find out. But I really thank you guys for your time. I thank you, Kai, for your products. You're doing an awesome job. Keep it up. Um, I hope to someday uh, meet you guys in person some kind of way. And again, this is the mixer, Mr. Bell. And you have been in the mixing hood. I'm signing off. Holla at your boy.